let's talk about prayer. On one level, prayer is the easiest thing to do. Prayer is simply talking to God. You don't need any special credentials, training, or anything. Anyone, anywhere can just talk to God and the creator of the heavens and the earth hears our prayers. That is an amazing thought when you think about it. At the same time, prayer is like the shoreline of a beach. The entry point is easy and safe, but as you step further into the ocean, you'll quickly realize two things. One, there is a vast, endless place worthy of exploration. And secondly, it is powerful. You can't control it, but you can learn to navigate it. So with that in mind, let's wade in and learn a few tips for navigation that can help us discover the beauty and power of prayer. So we can't get very far in understanding more about prayer without first acknowledging that, that prayer fosters relationship. This is a rather obvious point because communication is foundational to any relationship and prayer is communication with God, but there's more here. It is in this relational space of prayer that our knowledge of God becomes experience. You might have read reviews about a great restaurant, but until you go for yourself, it's just conceptual. Likewise, you might know in your head that God loves you, but you experience it when that truth moves into your heart and rubs up against your experience of love. Prayer that fosters relationship is discussing with God what we know versus what we experience. So prayer is where we deepen our relationship. Our relationship is where we experience God's love. And God's love is how we are transformed more into the image of Christ. Prayer being about relationship warrants repeating because honestly, I forget this too. I'm continually amazed at what I can learn about prayer when I look at it through the lens of relationship. It, to put it another way, if you desire to grow in your relationship with God, spend time with him and pray. And like any relationship, when you pray, the frequency, context, and content of our prayers all impact our relationship with God. So let's talk more about those. The more you talk to someone, the more your relationship grows to a point. You see, it's not just about frequency alone. The context and content matter too. Here's an example. Imagine you have developed a friendship with another parent during your kid's soccer practice and you regularly chat, mostly about soccer, from 3 to 4 p.m. every weekday. Even though you're spending quite a bit of time, of regular time together, the relationship will eventually become pretty sterile because it is one-dimensional. But if you invite this family over for dinner, the relationship will change because you're experiencing something new together. Prayer works similarly in this way. Simply changing the context of the relationship can change the relationship. So if we, if we apply this to prayer, what I always suggest here is to start easy. Consider where and when do you tend to think about God? Where and when do you find yourself a little bit more open to God than other times? Is it outside on a walk, alone in your car, at sunrise or sunset? Wherever it is, identify that place and start making that time intentional time with God. God has created us all uniquely, so praying alone at 5.30 in the morning might not work as well for you as a, an afternoon walk outside. Start with what's easy, then add on from there. As I mentioned before, Prayer is fostering a dynamic relationship with God, so recognize that there is another party involved. You have a desire for what you want from a time of prayer, and so does God. Sometimes those two desires line up nicely. Other times, not so much. Look for opportunities to follow ways that he might be prompting or leading you. This will undoubtedly come in ways that you don't expect. Sometimes it comes in the form of struggle. As we explore the various content of our prayers, we can expect it to bring a variety of experiences and feelings with it. It is as diverse and dynamic as any relationship that you might have. In my experience as a pastor, spiritual director, and as a prayer myself, it's in the areas where there is frustration, anger, disappointment, angst, just struggle. That's where I can look back and see God's doing his deepest work in my heart. What helps me is knowing the struggle has purpose. One of my professors in seminary would say, prayer is not a place to be good. 
It's a place to be honest. So whatever feelings come up during prayer, consider praying about that. If you're dutifully listening to me, but in your heart feeling like, yeah, I tried prayer and it didn't really change or do anything for me. Or maybe you're thinking, man, every time I pray, I'm so overwhelmed with the things I have to do, I get distracted and just give up. Or maybe you feel like your prayers never make it past the ceiling and they leave, it leaves you feeling more alone than when you started. If that's you, I want you to know that is hard. I see you. I know some of those feelings too. Maybe, maybe God is bringing those feelings up in prayer because he wants to be with you in the midst of them. Maybe this is part of his process to free you from those burdens. Maybe facing those struggles with God in prayer is exactly where you are supposed to be. Prayer isn't about getting our requests granted. It's about knowing his presence with us and entering his peace. Would you read this verse with me? The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Prayer can be a struggle for a lot of reasons. Sometimes it's related to a misunderstanding about who we are, and we come face to face with the reality that we're not who we wanna be. Other times we can struggle in prayer because we misunderstand who God is. We want him to be a little genie to grant our requests for our joy and satisfaction. What we discover in prayer is that the Lord is near to us. And when we are with God, we can see ourselves more clearly without shame or condemnation. And our joy and satisfaction is found ultimately in Him. Now today, I'd like you to consider your own experience in prayer. How might the frequency, context, or content of your prayers be impacting your relationship with God? While standing firmly on the truth that there is no condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus. Ask, is there anything to add, change, or take away from your prayer life now? Thanks for joining. Please let me know your thoughts and questions in the comment section below. And I've added some additional resources in the description section if you're looking to go a little bit deeper. Bless you.